Um, you, you mentioned Lau, you mentioned Feitoza. We got to talk about, you know, there was the group of four or five of you, you know, Hoyler, you, Feitoza, Lau Zio, Terere. You guys had, you know, tremendous matches between you. You know, you fought Hoyler once and then you went on to fight Lau, Feitoza, Terere several times. Tell me a little bit about those matches. You know, who would you say was like, you know, your your biggest rival and, and what was probably the most satisfying of wins out of all those guys. Not no bad feelings here, but like no. you know, you've you fought those guys so many times and it was like back and forth and, and it was is historical. You know, the matches were amazing between you guys. And I it's funny because I remember seeing you fight Ted Day bef- you know, uh prior to the Pro Ams. And then I was at the Pro Ams and I see you guys like being friendly and stuff in the hotel. Like, I think you were chasing him or something like that, like joking around. And I didn't understand because I was so young. I was like, man, I thought these guys don't like each other. I didn't get it, but you know, it's a different perspective, but you know, you guys had something special there. That dynamic between the five of you was, it was amazing rivalry, if you want to call it, but tell me a little bit about those matches in particular. I think against, against, I think, let's go talk about Hoyle was the first one, but yeah. 97, was final and then back then I was imagining like uh, 96 I was competing as purple become brown getting my black belt at the end of the year by 97 I fought against Leo and then got smoke and then worked my way up wet when win the national for team win something else and then fought against high Hoyle in the final I think that fight definitely helped a lot. It helped a lot to learn about strategy. You know, Hoyler, I think I was physically, I was a little, you know, not stronger, but I felt like, man, I have the tank. I can go 10 minutes, no problem. And then he's already, what, 32 years old over there. He's older than me, but, you know, in great shape. And then Hoyler used a great strategy. You know, he's able to make a grip on my pants and, you know, to really, like, uh, block all my tools to try sweeping in. So the fight ended up two and two. And then I lost by advantage, but I think he taught me a lot to see, you know, how he how he taught it to set up the strategy for this fight, and how he kept himself calm with the whole, you know, the whole yell thing, the whole the both the both teams really yell a lot, and and how maybe I was immature sometimes he's talking to the ref, you know what I mean? Like a few little things I think I learned in that fight, man. And then after that, that's, after I fought against Hoyler, I already lost for Leo. And then that fight really hurt me a little bit because I couldn't, like, do nothing with Leo. And it just almost made me feel I'm not prepared to be a black belt. Mm. But after that, I started winning a few things and then did a final of the World Championship. But even, even the weight of the, the fight, uh, when I lost the fight... I was, I didn't think about, oh, today people got second place. They feel, oh, man, my medal here. I'm world champion, second place. You know, great. Back then, it wasn't like that. It wasn't mm. like that. Like, you know, back then, of course, be a world champion is amazing. Yeah. But back then, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you, you, you want to fight to win. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to just get a second place. You don't want to yeah. get third place. And so today... You know, some people are going to put on the resume, oh, I'm third place, I'm second place. And then it's great today, correct? Because maybe yeah. maybe it's so hard, all right? But back then, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I totally, like, uh, didn't think so much about that because I'm looking for just the first, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I was yeah. coming from, you know, brown belt winning everything, purple belt winning everything. So when I lost that thing, you know what I mean? And I thought that's going to help me to, to build myself up. Uh, and, and that was tough, but, you know, taught me some lessons. But when I start fighting with Feitosa and Leo, that's where everything start hit me up too, because I start learning a lot about those guys and you know, you know, understanding how to fight against Leo, understanding how to fight against Feitosa. Feitosa was a little bit more methodic guy, you know, yeah. strong for his division, very tall. They didn't they didn't open so much, so I have to be the one to move a lot. I have to right. make sure the one I don't get caught on his. 30 game. Yeah. Leo is a little bit more creative. You know what I mean? It's very like, almost like a, you know what I mean? A, 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 it's, it's hard to figure out his game. So it's something like a, he almost, I can feel like a, he doesn't train to do. He mm-hmm. just do it. You know what I mean? And he do it in a speed where sometimes it's almost impossible to track. So it took me a few fights to really understand both. When I start understanding, then I start winning, you know, here. If it was a lose here. Leo, I believe the fights really 
I think Leo was definitely the biggest opponent in my career, maybe because we got so many closer matches, but at the same time, not so close because it was easy to decide for him. But the fight I, I won in 2000 was special just because the fight I finally understand how to fight against him, mm -hmm. how to control his pace, how to, to maintain my, my stability, emotional stability to say, okay, I'm winning. How are I going to cook the time until the end? In the I two thousand, in, in the two thousand one, in the world's finals in two thousand, yeah. So in that fight in particular, sorry to cut you off. What I saw was you, you stopped his pace. You know, you didn't allow him to really control the pace because Leo was known for being very athletic and acrobatic. But that match, you turned it into something different. You you made it into a methodical match, and you know you you executed that takedown, I believe, and then you were able to get the two. So. Talk a little bit about that match. What did you? What was the? What was the plan there? Because you mentioned that you had a good plan for the match. What was the plan for that, and how did you implement the, the it? The plan was exactly exactly what I did. It. I remember training against, you know, you know Fernando Boy, a friend of mine from back in the days. I remember training against different people, and I'm always looking for that Z guard. All right, putting mm -hmm. myself in half guard, you know, cooking the time there, looking for that specific pass. This was a fight. The fight I remember. I really trained for more than a month doing exactly what I did. Maybe the takedown change, mm -hmm. all right? But, like, the way I come up, the way he tried kick, so I knew he's going to kick back. I knew he's going to be doing – I knew he's not going to try flip me. I knew he's going to do certain things with me. So I was, during the whole month, just training, playing a lot of bottom. Just after, after I swept him, what I did, I played, I played bottom again. Because I knew I'm gonna have chance to control him more on the bottom because I knew he's not gonna be passing my guard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he's not gonna be doing a foot lock or a knee bar or anything. Yeah. He's just gonna be caught on my legs. So that's kind of was the first fight where all I'm gonna play because I always have a good tank. Never in my life I lost a fight because my tank was small, yeah. you know, near the other opponent. So always very hard to me understand here from all my teammates. Man, you have a great tank. You have a great tank. You have a great tank. So at some point, I always thought I can battle tank against tank. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But Leo always brought something different to the fight. He brought that unexpected thing. Hard to figure it out. I didn't have any partner training. We talked mm -hmm. about Hobson, Leo. They are great. But they never able to mimic what Leo Vieira does mm. on the map because he's so natural in certain yeah. things. Of course. You know what I mean? He learned jiu-jitsu, but a lot of things there is almost like, uh, you know, part of him. Yeah. So when I understand that, and then I really, uh, 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 you know, understand, I start thinking about, so if I don't do a plan for this guy, I'm never going to be him. And mm -hmm. so far I was 3-0, like he, he win three fights, and then, and then, and then I, zero fights against him. And then that fourth fight was the fight where I need to try beat both, like him and Feitola the same day. So it was a very important year. Mm -hmm. BJ won. You know, so it was a great year for Novinho. And then I just trained for a month doing the same thing over and over and over and then pay off. And then and then I don't remember any other fight. I put so much strategy. Like uh, sometimes I talk about, oh, Feitola, I like to hold the pants here to block butterfly sweep. What we do to count? And then do one or twice and then try to do if somebody do against me. But yeah. during the role, before, prior to the fight, I had a lot of people in my half guard trying to pass, trying to break my half, trying to do this. I had myself pulling to half guard a lot. I had myself doing different finishes from single leg. All right, if he tried to flip me, if he tried this, if he tried that. You know, I have different scenarios with people over there to help me to understand whatever he's going to do. And then mm -hmm. when it happened exactly about the, the way I trained, and then I able to accomplish the two points and say, now, now it's mine. Boom. And yeah. then I pull again and just play the way I have to play to win. Yeah. And Terere, Terere, he came a little bit after. He's younger, correct? Mm -hmm. And then was a guy I always had a good relation. But in some point, change a little bit when we start fighting and then he's losing. Because in the beginning, he was a blue belt. I'm already black belt. And then at some point, he always a guy enjoys seeing me fighting. But at some point, he, we, we catch up. Yeah. And he's a black belt fighting against me, a lot of defending alliance. And then he started getting more mature. He always very respectful. But, you know, 
it almost lost a little bit that fun thing that we used to have when he was white belt, blue belt. Mm -hmm. And then become a little bit more serious, you know what I mean? During the match and during the time we compete. But, you know, you know, I think he, after fight, we always have a good relation. Always. Yeah. But during the match, he always a little bit more serious. But the day, I think he was there. I think he was a guy. I think he, the game wasn't matched so much in the beginner. Yeah. I don't know if he had something from seeing me competing so much before and then that wall blocked him to to beat me back then. So we got a fight a couple months ago where he able to, you know, to win. Did a very good job at Polaris, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So mm -hmm. I even saw on his Instagram the other day, I think he said one of the fights he feel, you know, really glad to won because it was a win he looking for for, for a very long time. And, and then we even talked a little bit about that thing. But no, I think it was three or four days ago. But I think it's all great opponents. And then I think against Feitosa, the relation wasn't so nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't talk at all because back then the way I said it was, you know yeah. what I mean? You group, my group against Leo, against Terere, was always, always a good a good relation. Me and Hoyler, we had a good relation too. We kind of have the same manager mm -hmm. to do MMA. So that's brought us close and, and make, me, you know, make me meet some other great people too. But, you know, can't complain about my opponents. I think we all, we all belong to that generation where making guys like you and some other people really enjoy jiu-jitsu. Yeah, you know, and I think it was something special that you guys had. You know, those those matches, you know, uh, back and forth. Um, it was part of the history books, you know, and, and winning in the finals. And, you know, a lot it, – It's you guys were all the best of your era and your generation – and you met each other in the finals so many times and you went back and forth. So it's one of those things that, you know, those who study jujitsu history, um, they're going to know about it. And, and they're definitely matches that I recommend anyone go back and try to find and watch.